you for tuning in to another episode of Take 10 on Tuesdays with the Tennessee Tribune. I'm Jason Luntz. Today is one of the coldest days in Nashville since I've been here, but I came somewhere to get warmed up. I'm right down the street from the office at Fisk University. Today I'm here with Sharon Kay, the general manager of Jazzy 88, the radio station on campus. How are you today? I'm doing excellent. How about you? I'm good. Well, you should be good and warm, but this is a very warm, jazzed up place. It is. It is. When I walked <laughs> in, I heard the music playing. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I actually, I love jazz music. We don't have no jazz in um, Tennessee. I mean, in Nashville, for it to be Music City. Have well, we we're that? working on that. Okay. And, you know, as the, the jazz station, you know, WFSK is a blessing for Nashville because we get to lay it down like no other. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and if we had 10 stations, I don't know how that would work. Yes, uh, because we have to build up the listeners. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. And we fight for listenership just like the rest of the stations do. Well, as somebody that's been in the uh, radio industry, um, well, how long have you been in the radio industry? Uh, 37 years. So, 37 years. So, you have a lot of history and you've seen a lot happen in, in, in the music industry and the radio industry. Why, if we are Music City, I know, of course, the country, I hear a lot of rock and blues, but is it something about jazz that? It's not connecting yet, or is it the, it's the growth we need? Well, this is just my theory. Mm -hmm. uh, Nashville has never really had a a jazz station per se. Yes, I'm not talking about one that only plays one or two shows of jazz. I'm talking about a 24/7 yes. day beast. Yes, <laughs> and that's what we are. We're oh. we're the beast, and that's what I'm calling us. Okay, because we are a 24/7 cycle of the the greatest uh, in smooth and contemporary jazz. Oh, great! And our our sound is different. Our blend is different. We're not interested in being like everybody else. Oh, great. We're doing a new and different thing here. Okay. And and in building that up, we have to help our audience with with the transition that happened with uh, smooth. Most of the smooth jazz stations all over the nation uh, flip formats. Yeah, yeah. Because they were owned by corporate, and corporate didn't see any money in it, so they moved on. Yeah. Which is the way it is in this business. Yes. yes. If you're not making any money, then you're not making any sense. So they moved to something that made money for them. But meanwhile, all the jazz people were s still sitting there loving this music mm -hmm. and didn't, couldn't find it. So they lost a lot of time in terms of who the artists are, what what's going on with them, uh, what trends are happening in the industry. You know, the only place they could really get it was uh, on a jazz cruise That's or right. go to another city somewhere else. And this kind of thing was going on all over the country. So. And I, uh, for Nashville, this station has kind of been a steady, uh, I would say 24-7, but not as much as it is today. Okay. The, the uh, history of the station was, it was playing contemporary jazz. The music was different back in 73 when uh, WFSK signed on the air as WRFN. That was mm. the original call letters. 40 year, a 40 year anniversary? Yeah, this is our 40th year. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, when the station signed on, thank you. When the station signed on, it was Nashville's first black FM. Before the beat and 92Q was this. Oh, wow. So, and prior to that, the only thing that the black community really had that it listened to was AM radio. Yes. And that was VOL. But it was significant at the time because a lot of black uh, African American entrepreneurs could not own a radio station. That was a different time period in this industry. And there were very few black owned FM stations in the country. Yes. And the university, the student body, was actually the one who thought of it uh, prior to 72. I think the original thought, as, as the story of legend goes, it was in the late 60s was when they really thought about it originally. <laughs> uh, but the time came when the FCC realized that more stations, more African Americans were going to have to start mm -hmm. uh, license, getting licensed. So uh, from that, it, that, that's what makes this station significant and a blessing to Nashville, mm -hmm. is that it has had that steady beat. Now, this station at the time was playing some, uh, and they, we call it today contemporary jazz and R&B, and some blues. But that's the way it was in the business then. Yeah, you can yeah. just mix it all up and everybody's cool. It wasn't until big corporate came in and oh, compartmentalized nice. everything, because yeah. they could make money off those cost centers. And that's how they, you know, feed themselves uh, in terms of and now stock that's the, market. Now that's what the public expects from radio. Yeah. They expect a genre per station. Well, they expect, they have, some of the audience has the old school mindset of how it used to be. And then today's consumer 
they they're longing for something different because mm -hmm. they're getting tired of, of of I call it forty and a flip. Yes. You know, you play twenty and then you flip them over. Same it's, exact yeah, ones. it's oh, like no. in the morning you hear in the morning you hear at night. Yeah. That that doesn't happen here. We play thousands of songs at this station. Oh wow! So that makes a difference for us. We're building, uh, have built something here at uh, Jazzy 88 WFSK. We changed the name of the station. Uh, we've celebrated our birthday. We've raised the money. We've re refurbished and replaced everything at this radio station. Every wire, every bolt, every piece of equipment, everything here has been replaced. Wow. This is serious business. Yes, yes. So that's why I said we're going to be a beast. Yeah, you uh, are. I, and, you and, are. And, and we're non-profit. Oh, yeah, you are a nonprofit. Okay, yes. of course, with the school. And how long will this transition start? The well, the university, uh, I've been here since uh, November 28th of 2005. Okay. And they were doing various things a couple of years before that. They kind of e were easing into smooth jazz. But, you know, smooth jazz has gone through some ebbs and flows. Yes. Okay? It became almost wallpaper. Yes. It was yeah. boring to people. It was too sanitary. And it was just too white yeah okay <laughs> so we just did to me what it made sense was I played the because I do the music I select what I think are and the and the on-air people here select I do the they do their specialty shows we mm -hmm. have uh, our jocks that come in and they get a two or a three hour show and they play what they want but I do the overarching 24-7 blending up here okay and I'm not trying to um, this is a purpose-filled proposition. When Colonel Sanders made the recipe with all the herbs and spices, yes, yes, okay, yes. he put together what he thought was the combination. Yes, yes. So that's what I do here. Oh, I'm great. not trying to do what they, I don't care what they're doing. Yes. You know, we're trying to come up, you know, God said do. This is one of those kind of projects. I understand. And you're not looking side to side, you're looking forward. I ain't got time. Path. I don't have time. You're because right, I right. have a, a, a music ear. I'm from the Kansas City area where jazz is king. Mm. I'm in a music city. Yes. I didn't come here to play Whistling Dixie. I ain't doing the same <laughs> stuff y'all doing. I'm trying to do do this at Right and Righteous. I oh, feel blessed great. to be here. That's great. That's beautiful. Now that I know so much more, I'm, I'm excited about it as a jazz fan to know that we have this um, right here in town. Now I want to switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about you. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> so now you said you're originally from Kansas. Yes. And how long um, have you been in um, Nashville? Uh, tw uh, twenty-seven years. So twenty-seven years. Yeah. And when you first came here, what was your experience in radio like? Uh, where were you working? Well, at? when I first got here, I, I worked at WLAC. I did news. Um, actually, I, I did the board. I was a board operator. Oh wow. At first. When I first got to town, because you had to get in where you fit in. That's right. You can't go in right. and say, no, I, I, I was a celebrity when I left <laughs> Kansas. I yeah. get here, and so you know, know. oh my God. Yes. They're like, I don't know you. Get out of here, little <laughs> black girl, you know? So uh, I had to scratch in. Yes. And uh, WLAC hired me uh, to work on the weekends operating the board. Wow. And I did it. And then they, you know, allowed me to finally use my skills. So uh, I got to anchor the news. Uh, and that was the uh, uh, one of the most important things I think I did in Nashville was mm -hmm. being an anchor, a black female anchor at WLAC. That's a big deal. Uh, it was a huge deal. And there were uh, there was another female anchor, uh, Paula Major, here in town. She was another one as well. But largely, it was a the station was a um, news talk okay. station. Uh, and occasionally, uh, I got to fill in for Ruth Ann Leach to do her talk show in the midday. But it's been tough in Nashville to do talk in your in your black. Yes, yes. They won't let you ha give you a chance. Wow. They're, you're very pigeonholed here. So getting an opportunity to be here at the university has been a, a complete blessing for me personally. Yes. Now you're at HBCU. And you definitely now Man, focus. I can talk. I can say black and not have to hide. Yeah. You know, I can say black, 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 and I can say white, 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 and not have to worry about it. I mean, being real, no, I, I appreciate it. In corporate, that. it's tough. It's tough, yeah, yeah. Because there's certain consider. things you can and can't say. Yes, but now before you came in, you were also at ninety two point one. Yeah. Well, when uh, the university brought me to um, here to the station, I was at ninety two Q. Okay. And uh, I'll always love ninety two Q. And um, my co-workers over there, I always loved them because they were, you know, we 
we uh, did a lot of great things in Nashville mm -hmm. on that station when I was there. And I think they're still doing a great job now. Oh, that's good. Uh, but I got a, a chance there to start my talk program. Yes. And um, I did news at 92Q uh, with Ernie Allen. Um, Ernie and I have been friends. We used to be um, competitors. <laughs> when I worked at uh, WLAC doing news, he was doing news at 92. Sure, at one so, time, right, yes. exactly. So, you know, we've always been at, at news loggerheads. <laughs> and he thinks he's better at news than I think. And I'm like, no, no, no. no I'm better at news. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So we have that thing, you know, yes. that, that news thing. And that's what made it fun. We'd have our little news arguments, you know, about that's what we fun. think about a story or a yes, lead or something yes. like that. <laughs> and uh, I would do the, the news in the morning. I would get up about 3 o'clock in the morning and do the reporting for him. And uh, he would do the news during the Joiner show. And uh, as uh, time went by, I wanted to do a talk program. Bad. Because I knew the community had to have it. And um, it was just like, it was one of those things that... Uh, I kept asking and asking, you know, for something that I knew I would probably never get because they were not going to stop the music. Yes, yeah. And they, they wanted, you know, just to keep the music going because that's what they thought was going to... If you stop the music, back we ain't going to listen to them. Yeah, that's, that's not think. true, of course. No. Uh, but when I, it took about a year to get the show on, and they finally let me. And this was the show, What's the, what's the 411 What's the 411? What's it the started in 2001. Okay, that was a great kids. title, great title. Well, my daughter named it. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, my yeah. oldest daughter. Uh, I asked her, because uh, it's hard to believe I have a daughter that's 41. Yeah, really? Okay, yes. Oh, okay. Okay, I told her, I said, don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, uh, no, yeah. Uh, I said to her, I said, Tina, uh, Mama's going to get a show at 92 Kids. Like, whoa, oh my God. Because, you know, they grew up listening to 92 Kids. Yeah, it was exciting. And they was like, oh, my no, God. No. They were just like out of their minds, my kids. <laughs> so... I said, what, would I, what should I name it? Well, name it was a 411, Mom, because you always want to know everything. Well, information. <laughs> so, right. 411 for you kids out there was, the, was. <laughs> was what we called on the telephone to get information exactly. and numbers. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know if kids know what 411 is right now. No, yeah. but I'm, I'm thinking like Mary J. Blige's song. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about that. Oh, I love that song, yeah. too. But as soon as I heard it. Um, once the 411, I was like, that's a catchy title. That's one of my favorite songs. Yeah, too. so my daughter, you know, I let her do that, and so my kids can feel ownership in what I did. They've always been a part of my radio career. Yes, yes. So, what's the 411 signed on in December 2001? Okay. And uh, we haven't missed a broadcast in um, 12 years. So, now that you're here um, as a manager, hey, you. Put the show on here. I brought here. my stuff with me. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's my show. That's how you do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, see, it was mine because I had to work hard to get it. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, and it was not easy to get. And, uh, you know, the, the show has had success. I mean, we had a paid sponsor. Uh, you know, we had listeners, we had ratings. Well, tell the audience, because I've seen pictures and I've heard, but tell the audience some of the people that you interviewed on that. Oh, no, the, the list is so long. I mean, I, it, every, the who's who of everybody. Yes. I can't even, you know, I was just thinking, thinking about this other day. I said, you know, for my eulogy, I, I should name and for my kids. Because I'm not, when I get old, I ain't going to remember none yeah. of them. Then list all the people I've interviewed, just yes. so they can know. Yes. You know, when Mama goes home to Jesus, that, you know, she really did some interviews. She did some. <laughs> right. Because I'm going to, you know, I, I'm saying my kids ain't going to believe this. They, you know, they, you They're not, yeah. <laughs> I know, even looking around, I guess we're going to have to just uh, let people do some research for themselves, but I even see in this office a lot of people. Um, that Famous figures in yes. civil rights and history, yes. both white and black. People yeah. in music. You know, people in academia, you yes. know, I've, I've interviewed some of the brightest minds out there. I saw you, you did you interview um, Dr. Glover from uh, Tennessee State? Oh, yeah. Yes, I saw. I saw I've had answer. all the black presidents of all the universities on, including Colgate on the uh, West Coast of, uh, Christian College. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I've had oh, wow. the president of, uh, what's his name, McPhee at MTSU on. I've had this current president, uh, our president, Dr. H. James Williams. Yep, I saw that. Uh, Madam O'Leary, I've had her on. So I mean, you know, I've been, I've done rounds. Yes. In, yes. in Tennessee, but I mean nationwide rounds. I've now, done those as well. Now, the, when I see um, the nationwide people that you um, interview, so some of those are most call of the names? people I, uh, yeah. Okay. Most of the people I interview are not from here. Yes. I started out doing locals. Okay. But I really didn't feel like they it didn't matter to them. 
Because yeah. they just saw me as a local person. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> with somebody that, yeah, if somebody's in L.A., they, they're calling Nashville. They're like, this is somebody important in Nashville. I'm they love it. my show. Yes, yes. People excited. love it. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. Uh, everyone that I've interviewed around the country either calls me back or emails me back and says, I want to be back on that show. I like Sharon. I love her style. So I'm saying, you know, that that's that's cool. That works for me. I mean, some of the, the top names in, in all areas, uh, including research and, and human behavior and mental health and, you know, education and politics and, I mean, wow. you name it. I've interviewed them. I've and, interviewed thousands of people. And what's your interview, so is your interview style, do you focus on what that person's specialty is or do you have more of a personal approach or it depends on? Well, my show is called What's the 411. Yeah. I want to know, okay? Because <laughs> there's stuff I want to know that I would, I know that one day somebody might find interesting. That's right, that's know? right. And I'm not a surface person. Okay, so you want to get in, yeah. get into depth. Well, now what? Um, now when can they catch uh, What's the 411? It's on uh, Wednesday afternoon from 4 to 6 p.m. and Sunday morning from 7 to 9 a.m. Okay, it's Sunday the re... No, Sunday is, we only did, you know, it's so weird that people uh, remember that because we only did it for a real short time where we did the rebroadcast uh, of the of the show and it was just for such a short window. I'm like, how do people that still stick in their head? I'm live and, and kicking at 7 a.m. on Sunday mornings. I do a live newscast. Oh, every Sunday so, morning. Each, so Sunday Wednesday are two different shows. Yeah. Sunday, wow. I'm talking to Jesus people, honey. Okay, so Sunday's more based on... Oh, faith, I'm talking to the deacons on the car and the deaconesses in the car and, and where they the call it, and they call it. Oh. You know, that, 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 that's amazing. That, yeah, you actually, that's the thing about Nashville. It's such a community that people are actually calling a radio station, FM, and you're speaking to them, and I'm sure you know many of them. Well, some of them, some but of I mean, know. I just talk to the audience like I know them. Cause that's I, how you do I, it. I probably do. Yeah. You know, I mean, because I'm a people person. I'm a, I'm a about the community. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's I've always good. been like that. That's good. Well, that kind of leads me to my, my last question. I usually like to ask people, um, most people I interview are asking this question, and what I would like to know, since you've been here for quite a while in the city of Nashville, and you know a lot of folks, a lot of folks know you, how do you feel about the state of Nashville for uh, African Americans now, and African Americans in business in particular? Well, one of the things that kind of disturbs me is, you know, the Lord has blessed a lot of people in Nashville, mm -hmm. both black and white and Hispanic, mm -hmm. but I don't think they put, they help each other here. Wow. I don't think that people, you know, when you see something positive or somebody's doing something positive, you know, why don't you all ever help people? Why don't you all ever say, you know what, I'm going to support this. Yes. And I know people have been burnt and all that, but I mean, if, if everybody could just think more in terms of, I've been blessed, let me be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Instead of telling me about where you go to church. Mm -hmm. You know, how about blessing somebody? Because you don't know who you're sitting next to might need a tank of gas. Yes. I mean, somebody might be broke. As, you know, I've been broke in Nashville, and it was very few folks that threw me a bone, okay? <laughs> very few. So, so you're saying, so people are gaining a lot of success here in this city, but they they're have to remember. They're sitting on it. They're not they have, yeah. They have share. They have they're share scared the love. to, they're scared, and I understand why people are scared to trust, because they've been burned and so on and so forth. But I mean, but at, at some point, yes, when, you know, you see something positive that's going on, yes, our community should do something to help and save itself, instead of saying, please save me white people. Yes. I'm sick of that. Yes. I mean, do, do you understand what I'm yes. saying? That's a weak mindset. Yes. The 401 Show is an empowerment, encouragement broadcast. Mm -hmm. I should never, ever, ever have a thought of, we don't have sponsors, we don't have this, we don't have that. We're doing a positive thing at WFSK. Mm -hmm. I should never wonder if we're going to be able to make our fundraising goal. Yes. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. You understand what I'm saying? I think that, but I, I definitely think there are enough people here that, that there's a lot of people gaining a lot of success that never have in the city before. But there has to be something, a common thread that brings everyone together so they realize if they work together, it could be even better for, yeah. for everyone. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to break off a check either. I mean, you know, sometimes you can just be supportive. Yes. Of something that some, or you could just pick up the phone and make a call. Yes. Or you could do something to open the window, just a crack. Yeah. Or do something. You yes. know, that's what we used to do back in the day. Yes. So when somebody made it, they didn't forget about where they came from. I got you. I got you. 
Well, we definitely um, are trying to really work on that at the Tribune. Uh, that's why I, I love this Take 10, and I like to, every week, present somebody that the city needs to know about so that, you know, we can form a community of, of successful people and, and we can help out others that want that success. Well, as long as you don't define success as how much money I have. No, you can definitely okay? do that. Because no. that's where the confusion comes in. I agree with you. People right? get confused in Nashville because, like, I'm not a baller or people that, that I know are not <laughs> rich and famous. I'm like, you know what, but these are the best people in the world. Oh, I agree with you on that. Okay? I agree with you. I'm with all the earth people. I understand what you're saying. You're right. Who will be there for you on a cold day when you don't have nothing to eat or drink? They will be there for you. A cold day like today. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? I am warm now. I'm so glad I had a chance to come to Jazzy 88 and meet the famous Sharon K. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. All right. And uh, once again, I want to thank you for tuning in to Take 10 on Tuesday with the Tennessee Tribune. See you next time.